Whoa, good morning. Today is, um, was it 8, 9, 10? Today's 11th of June uh, 2018. I'm Paul Worrell, I'm founder and chief developer of Zonified. Um, I've got domestics to do today, so I'm outside working in one of our paddocks. Um, but I had this thought in my head and wanted to share it today. Okay, so this is the idea I had. I'm going to be try try and be as short and sweet as possible. So, with our current um, first use case that we've been focusing on, we have a department in UK local authorities called a register service, and these guys uh, provide a public service to register birth, deaths, marriages, etc. Uh, they also do a number of other services and they're trying to expand their service proposition to, um, to uh, get additional revenue in. So at the moment what they do, the public comes along, let's have the public character in red, and they provide a document in exchange for a fee. And then that document is used by the public to attest to a certain life event to many organisations. But unfortunately, there are problems with that document. Now, of course, lots of people know this, um, and there's uh, a number of initiatives to try and turn that into some form of digital record, but it has been very difficult to do that for a number of legal reasons, okay? But that's not really the point here. If you can just ignore that the point that I'm making is that the value exchange with the public here is constrained to one organization's perspective of what they do for that member of the public. But we're thinking about um, this differently when we've got blockchain. So with blockchain, there's two parts to blockchain. There's the, I'm going to put it in the cloud. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, so I'm going to put that in a cloud, a bit of a cliche, but basically uh, this is the blockchain, BC. So some people like to call it a DLT, or distributed ledger, distributed ledger technology. Um, but it's basically starting to move kind of the proof of uh, the existence of things and uh, the relationship with other people into a shared, universally acceptable platform, right? So if we can imagine now that rather than this being a document that's passed to the public, it's purely something that exists on the blockchain. Okay, the next thing, the approach that we take is known as a self-sovereign journey. So instead of this document uh, being controlled by the register, um, the attestation remains controlled by the register, but the medium of attesting to the life event being true is now owned by the public. So we call this a life event activity. Okay, so the public has this life event activity and they have a register, or registrar, sorry, a registrar, um, actually uh, attest, providing an attestation onto that activity, right? So now we've got the ability for this customer to go to many organizations, and all they do is refer those organizations to those activities, right? Now, one of the problems with the way uh, that the documentation is used at the moment, known as a compassionate document, uh, uh, no, cherished, a cherished document. Um, there are all kinds of issues in processing that, and there are also, also policies and control processes uh, um, around recording that they've received that document. And there are restrictions in particular with documents from the register services that prevent uh, organizations being able to even store uh, copies of these documents okay so the whole process of managing uh, these attestations in the, 
way it's done now is very problematic and so the result of that of course is cost so these guys here uh, have a cost now um, if you went to them and said we think we can reduce the cost obviously they'd say well how much does that cost and they're looking for um, uh, you know that cost to be materially much lower than the cost that they've got now so they have a cost saving imagine that every organization is trying to do that so and this is the point I'm get, getting to and I hope it doesn't lose people but now because we've got a second aspect of the blockchain which is incredibly important although a lot of organizations try and pretend it isn't but it is really important it's the why blockchain uh, really is what it is we have the crypto asset so we actually have a form of value that's possible you know like bitcoin is a form of value so we have a form of value that is inherently part of the blockchain so what's possible is instead of a value exchange going here where it's all lumped into one uh, interaction there's a, the possibility of the value exchange being transitive I call it okay so it's between an organization in this case a register and other organizations even though they have no other business relationship there's no uh, process relationship but what we're able to do is use the blockchain to create and integrate processes with value across organizations and, and this is how the value exchange happens. So what happens is the public refer the organizations to this activity on the blockchain, the life event activity, and the attestation that um, a particular life event is true will be uh, written into, cryptographically, into this activity, otherwise a smart contract actually, into the network. So it will be written into that, and, it, and basically it's an account. Okay, if we consider it an account. I used to hate that term used by Ethereum to describe um, certain uh, concepts, but now I can understand why it's useful to call it an account. But basically this account is cryptographically controlled by this register, and um, they have used that account to attest to this life event being true. What that means is that every time this activity is presented to an organization and processed, the value that they're receiving from the attestation is proof that their customer or their client has gone through a particular life event. Okay, That's the value, and the value has been provided by the register. So at the moment, there is absolutely no... Uh, um, uh, the, the, the value of receiving that attestation in every organization has absolutely no relationship whatsoever to the attester, okay, the register. But this changes everything, okay? So now, every time that that activity is processed, there can be a small payment made from the accounts of each of these organizations to the activity, and then it's paid into the account of the register. So, if you can imagine then that this may be a relatively small payment, but every time that activity is processed, there's another payment, okay? So, how does this change things? So, from a register's point of view, they can provide now a useful service to the public, potentially without charging at all. What in effect they get is for every attestation, it's like a small investment. So the attestation is made and then every time the public uses that attestation with somebody who's providing, who's enjoying the value and the usefulness of that attestation, they're making a small payment to them in a crypto asset. It, it, it might not be like Bitcoin, or, or a, um, uh, an asset in that way. It can just be a record that there has been uh, um, a transfer of payment and then somehow it's settled in another way. But let's not get into the details. Um, 
What we're talking about here is a complete, if you can see, it's a complete change in how you match value across organizations and in the ecosystem. No longer is it always point to point here where it's probably priced unfairly. Uh, there's an unfair uh, over cost to the customer. Um, it's priced to those who really need that attestation. They're the ones that are paying for it because it improves well, it stops them having someone uh, 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 pretend to have had a life event when they haven't um, and other fraudulent type, uh, types of activity. So there's all kinds of value here um, that these organizations get for processing that attestation. So why not get that passed through? And it's a small amount, okay? It is a small amount for each one. So uh, it would be much cheaper than the, the cost that they have now for handling, for example, those cherished documents, much cheaper. So there isn't going to be a resistance to doing that. If there's an ideological one, oh, we don't like to pay, then I think that's odd. I think people would just say, no, this makes it cheaper for us to validate a customer's life attestation as being, or life event as being uh, legitimate. So we're happy to pay that. And for the register, instead of a single fixed, as cheap as possible uh, payment for the administration of that attestation to the public, they're getting a revenue um, that could go on for quite some time against that signature. So that was the bubbling idea I had in my head this morning. Um, and uh, so I wanted to share that with you. I don't know whether that, I don't know whether that was easy to see and I don't know whether um, it was still difficult to understand, but I'm telling you this works and this changes how you can match true value between the people who need the value and are prepared to pay and those that are providing the value. We no longer have to be inefficient and pass on unnecessary costs um, to, the wrong, to the wrong people. Okay, thanks very much, until tomorrow.